The fourth word that I'd like to discuss is the word dominion. And this is going to get a little bit uh, theological, but because it, it's also eschatological, it also has end times implications. In brief, they believe that there are seven mountains in culture, politics, uh, society, family, the arts. And if the new, mm, from the new apostolic reformation, what do they, what do they call the kids? The new, the, uh, the new warriors of the Joel's army, the latter day. Yeah. They, they, they raise up these kids in the new apostolic reformation to conquer each one of the mountains of the seven mountains. And then as soon as we conquer the seven mountains, Jesus is going to come back. It's, it's a dominionist theology. This is from one of the few books that actually is critical of anything in the New Apostolic Reformation from Latter Rain Theology, which is also could be underneath the New Apostolic Reformation. If you don't know, there's basically three rivers. One is from Toronto, where the Toronto Blessing happened. In Kansas, it's IHOP, not the Pancake Store, International House of Prayer. And then the third river, which flows together into an ocean of sewage, is out of Bethel. Uh, the, in the Bethel Church in Redding, California with Bill Johnson. Those are the three streams that form the New Apostolic Reformation. Uh, gentlemen, the church must be restored and equipped to rule. It must come to perfection. Out of the purified church will come a spiritual elite core, a corporate Christ who possesses the spirit without measure. They will purge the earth of all wickedness and rebellion. They will judge the apostate church. They will redeem all creation. First of all, very attractive to young people who want something to do. You can comment on that if you'd like, but I would like you to focus on dominion. How do we biblically take dominion? What are the eschatological implications of this, and where are they going wrong? Well, it's post-millennialism that we're going to usher in the kingdom um, by making the world a better place, and once we have restored the earth under the dominion of the gospel, then Christ will return at the end. And that is certainly contrary to what we read in the Word of God. I mean, we see that it will be desperate times at, at that period before Christ returns, not better and better. Worse and worse. It'd be worse and worse. And so they, they really have it totally backwards. Um, we cannot usher in the kingdom until the king comes back, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Um, and if you read the New Testament and try to see that we are to restore dominion in arts and media and, and all of that, I mean, they, they would, that was laughable in the first century. Like, okay, they're going to restore these different dominion hills in the Roman Empire. I mean, they're just trying to survive for their life and escape being martyred to death. Um, it, it, it's just a false eschatology. Mm -hmm. I don't think it starts with a false eschatology. I think it starts with a madness, an egotistical madness that you actually think you have the kind of power that could pull that off. And if you tell yourself that long enough and you get a, enough people to buy into it, it, it gets a life of its own. And I, I think it is just a way to dupe people. I and mean, we all know how young people are interested in social justice and how Christianity is, even evangelical Christianity, non-charismatic, has turned away from the gospel. Why has it turned away from the gospel? If you go to a, a, a place that's been through a difficult time, you go to New Orleans after a hurricane or whatever and you start reaching out to people, if you go and sit them down and say, let me tell you why you need to come to Jesus Christ because you're a sinner and you go through the gospel, what kind of reception are you going to get? You're probably going to run out of the house. It's going to be very difficult. People aren't going to buy in. But show up with food. Show up with clothes. They will love you. They will embrace you and say you're doing this in the name of Jesus. That kind of stuff is easy. What's hard is the gospel presentation. Well, I think they've captured some of this uh, desire to change the world, which is always appealing to young people, and that's who you see in these things, young people. And with a kind of crazy megalomania and a kind of a vast overestimation of the power that they have, um, they, they define their eschatology. I don't think it comes from studying the Bible and coming up with a post-millennial view. I think it it comes from egotism gone mad, and it may be aided and abetted by Satan uh, himself. 
If you read about the NAR, you, you, you know, they, when Rick Perry was running for president and he ended up at a bunch of uh, NAR, New Apostolic Reformation, by the way, it, it is basically built on the fact that there are apostles today. Peter Wagner is the leading apostle, but you can be an apostle. I think it was 600 bucks. You could be an apostle. <laughs> and you send your money to Peter, and he sent you a certificate saying you were an apostle. So they had, uh, they had divided the state of Texas, if you remember, into, they'd taken every county in Texas, and they had started to take dominion over every county in Texas. And the big prayer meeting that Rick Perry attended was a prayer meeting of all these dominionists trying to take over Texas. And they came up with crazy things like little demons and all, all kinds of stuff. Uh, th there's a sense in which this is just egotism gone mad. And uh, there's also a sense in, in, in which may, it, it may be literally the, the kingdom of darkness uh, behind it all. Uh, but but Steve, Steve is exactly right in saying what the Bible says is the world gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and Jesus comes and judges the entire world in a judgment that parallels the flood in Genesis, only it's by fire and not by water. You know, the, the passage that immediately jumped to my mind, John, when you're saying that is, is out of Daniel. We hear about the kingdoms that are going to exist, and they're going to be all human kingdoms. They're described mm -hmm. later in Daniel, of course, as these vicious animals. That's what the world is going to be. And then one approaches the Ancient of Days, the Son of Man, and to him is given, is given dominion. The kingdom. Yeah. I, I think that you, you've answered this most certainly in part and perhaps in whole, but why else do you suppose so many young people are drawn to that, to being a forerunner generation. I, I don't think it has anything to do with what they're saying for most of them. It's the music. It's all the stuff. They're, they're, they're liberated. It's like getting drunk. I mean, it's like going out and just getting bombed so you don't have to think about the issues of life. Shut down the music. Totally shut down the music. Turn on all the lights. And they all need to be white lights, just like normal light bulbs. Just turn on the lights, <laughs> shut down all the music, and have some guy get up there and try to sell that. Yeah, it's not going to work. You've got to have some way to manipulate their minds and turn them into zombies. 